Hi, I'm Carolina. And I'm Amanda. And we're both co-owners of Booty Yoga in La Jolla and founders of Flow Lift Fitness. We're both in person and online. And today we are so excited to talk to one of our Flow Lift instructors who also happens to be an internal medicine doctor, and she's also becoming an integrative cardiologist. And she is a big promoter and lover of Flow Lift and how it's just this amazing comprehensive workout. So we wanted to talk to her just about um, overall general heart health, preventing and reversing heart disease, um, and the most important things you can do for health and longevity. Um, spoiler alert, it is exercise. So we will be breaking that down and she will be joining us in just a moment. Hi, and now we have Dr. Elizabeth Epstein with us, our special guest today. She is a board certified internal medicine physician, as well as an integrative cardiology fellow. And on top of that, one of our favorite parts is that she is a certified flow lift and yoga instructor. Welcome to Booty Babble, Elizabeth. Thank you so much for having me on. So you are one of our favorite people to talk to about flow lift just because it's so nice to talk to someone who is an, you know, an expert and has all this education in health and, you know, what is best for people, especially when it comes to cardiovascular health. Um, but before we start talking about exercise, um, we would love to just hear a little bit about your background and when you started medical school, where you went and like what kind of pulled you into wanting to be a doctor. Yeah, absolutely. So I feel like I just kind of followed the path unfolding to my interest in science and interest in, got interested in research at undergrad at Berkeley, um, studied integrative biology. So I've always kind of had that predilection for the integrative approach which means that basically you're not looking at things through a single lens. So I kind of describe integrated biology as like you're zooming out from the molecular level to look at biology through the lens of history and sociology and psychology. Um, and so my favorite class in undergrad was medical ethnobotany, which was, yeah, it was a class taught by a practicing physician who had traveled the world and learned about plants as medicine um, from different indigenous people around the world who've used those like plants for thousands of years. So I got interested in that approach and then came to medical school at UCSD and then ended up paired kind of serendipitously. We do these preceptorships with um, primary care doctors in the community in the first couple years of medical school got paired with an integrative cardiologist and fell in love with it and decided right then and there that's what I wanted to do. The reason I like it is because I say it's kind of like the yin and yang of cardiology. Like cardiology, we can really save lives. We have so much technology nowadays. You can die and come back to life. Like that's how amazing it is. We can put a new heart in, a new valve in, a stent and all these things. But the best thing and the only way to actually prevent and reverse coronary artery disease is are the things you can do for yourself. So I love that way about empowering people to do things for themselves rather than relying on a procedure or a medication or a doctor to do those things. So the fact that those are the strongest things you can do, despite all the technology was so exciting to me. And I just really wanted to be a part of empowering people to, to make those changes and assessing people's risk, helping people reduce their risk. And so that's how I came to this and uh, ended up do, studying integrative cardiology at Scripps. And so that's what I'm currently doing now. That's awesome. So along the lines of what you were just saying, like empowering people, what do you think is the most powerful intervention for health? I think it's key lifestyle factors. So if it would be exercise, diet, human connection, pretty much are probably my top three. Wow. And I think exercise is is huge in that and i think we have the most clear yes. evidence 
science that exercise makes a huge difference in terms of preventing chronic disease, meaning metabolic syndrome like obesity, diabetes, heart disease, fatty liver, um, and also improving longevity. So making people live longer, making people die less for any cause. It's huge. And living longer and like feeling good in that like extra time you get. Yeah. I love that you brought that up because we, in cardiology, we're obsessed with mortality benefit. Like all of our studies are like, is there a mortality benefit? What are the outcomes? But quality of life is huge. And that's, I love that you phrase it that way. Cause in, in cardiology, we have cardiac rehab, which is a fitness program for patients who've had a heart attack or been diagnosed with heart failure or something. And time and time again, that shows a quality of life benefit. And I always love bringing the focus back to quality of life because what, what is it worth to prolong someone's life if they don't have that quality of life? They're living a life that you can really love and enjoy. And what type of exercise or types, you know, maybe it's not just one, like, what do you think are the most important things for people to be doing, you know, to promote that quality of life? Because ultimately that's what it's going to do. Like you got to keep moving. Like what are the most important types of exercise you think that yeah. people should do? So there are definitely different types, um, but so the WHO came out with guidelines for what does each person need to do in terms of exercise to promote long-term health. And so they recommend 150 to 50 minutes of moderate intensity activity per week, which could be like a walk or a brisk walk. Um, that comes out to about 30 minutes a day, every day of the week. Or you could do 75 to 150 minutes per week of a more vigorous physical activity. Um, such as running or flow lift, I put in that category. Yeah. And so those recommendations are based on the fact that if you follow those, you're going to get about a 25% reduction in mortality, meaning you're less likely to die from any cause, which is huge. I mean, there's no drug, there's no drugs that do this. Like it's incredible. Those types of numbers we're looking at when we look at big studies on drugs and statins and things, but like, Oh, there's a, like a 5% mortality. That's great. You know, but exercise is huge. And these are based off of enormous studies over a hundred thousand, a hundred thousand plus people over many years follow up. So it's getting those minutes in of moderate or vigorous physical activity. That's one, one way. They've also looked at step counts, so found that for every, for every 2,000 steps a day, you get about a 10% drop in mortality. So, and if you go up to 10,000 steps a day, people you know, say, oh, I do 10,000 steps a day, that's about a 50% drop, which is, wow. which is also huge. <laughs> well, is. And then kind of going back to some, another thing I love about flow lift is that you get that resistance training, that weight training strength training. And so the WHO also recommends 40 to 60 minutes a week. So on two or more days of strength training and that separate to visit for to aerobic activity has about a 17% drop in mortality and it's additive with the aerobic physical activity. So flow lift, I love because you basically get everything all in one. Like you basically do two or three of those per week and boom, you are meeting the WHO guidelines. Um, and you're also getting the added benefit of working with balance, which is something that's huge as people age in order to have a greater longevity, be able to do all the things they want to do, pick up their grandkids and great grandkids as they're living till their 90s. So it also has that balance aspect. And then kind of the last piece of data that I think about for, for fitness is they looked at cardiorespiratory fitness. So they basically did testing on people and used accelerometers to test, like, let's put people in buckets of the highest fitness, medium, lower fitness, and what is their mortality and they found that people with the highest fitness level have a 51% lower mortality. Um, so 
I look at they as you can see with cardiology, I'm obsessed with mortality benefits, longevity, people living a long life. There are lots of people who are obsessed with this. Lots of talk nowadays about longevity and looking yeah. at nonagenarians and things like that. And so exercise, as you can see, is is huge. So it's it's the aerobic activity, step count, strength training, and being fit. And do you think that because we have lighter weights, let's say it's three pound dumbbells usually and one and a half to two and a half pound ankle weights. Do you think, and you know, it's, it's high rep, like those three pound dumbbells by the end feel like, you know, 10, 15 pounds. Do you think it's definitely enough weight that you can like check that sort of strength training box? A hundred percent. I do. We're not asking people to go to the gym and lift 300 pounds deadlift. I think it's actually ideal because you're getting, we're just asking for some light weights and doing some reps, exactly what you guys do. And so what do you think about, think about range of motion in terms of flow lift? Because I've seen just a lot of people who lift heavy weights and, you know, go to the gym and do very isolated exercises or, you know, something like even Pilates, that's very, just like a limited range of motion. Most of those people send, tend to be very tight and they don't have a lot of range of motion. Whereas, you know, in flow lift, even though I do feel a little bit tight, I never lose any range of motion. And I think, you know, especially as we get older, that's such a huge part of feeling good. So what's your take on that in terms of, you know, from the physician perspective? Yeah, 100%. I think, you know, when we think about what do we want to be able to do living to into the, our 90s and how can we work backwards and start to work towards that now, having a good quality of life for a really long time, things like range of motion, flexibility, balance, being able to get up off the floor when you're in your 90s requires a lot of work now. Um, in terms of range of motion and balance, being able to squat, being able to stretch. And um, so I think that it's really important. It's another element that I think is really cool that flow lift incorporates that aerobic activity, that vigorous activity, that strength work, but also that balance, range of motion, stretching, I think is huge. Yeah, I think the other aspect of that too with yoga was, you know, before me and Amanda created Flow Lift, we would only do yoga. And there, I mean, we did other stuff too, like you did Pilates and I had a personal trainer. But that's what was missing from yoga was the strength training, like not having the resistance training. And I think having both is so important because, you know, especially as we got into our 40s, I realized how much harder it was to stay fit right? And yoga just wasn't doing it for us anymore. Like it'll help with flexibility and balance and all that. But in terms of like building muscle, it just lacks that, right? Don't you think, Amanda? Yeah. And also I, I, for me, and I think you would agree, like I'm 45 now and it just actually makes me want to work out harder because of, uh, first of all, how much better I look and I do care about that and how I feel. I feel so amazing. I feel so good after flow lift. It's so hard, which I think is one of the things that's intimidating about it. And I'll talk to people like, oh, I'm too old to work out that hard. Like people have this mentality, like you need to slow down as you get older. And I really, my in my unprofessional opinion, and that's why I'd like to hear what you think about it. I, I strongly disagree. I'm like, no, you need to work harder if, you know, I've been listening to a lot of that, like Dr. David Singer. I don't know if you're familiar with him, but he's one of these big longevity guys. And he's talking about like really turning on your longevity genes. And he's saying pretty soon, like we could live till we're 150. And that means my dad is like at 75 would just be like, you know, at the middle of his life. And I mean, I know my dad's not going to be one of those people, but you know, I'm only 45. If, if it's possible at one point to live to 150, like we're just really getting started at this age. Like I think people need to work harder rather than take it easy. A hundred percent. Your intuition on that is correct. That is 
totally true. I think that I agree with you. It's completely false when people just say, well, I'm getting old. It's like, no, if you maintain, but it takes a lot of work when you're younger to get there when you're 90, you know, because you're going to end up losing some muscle mass. Um, at that time, you're not, you may not be able to build back up backwards, but if you're maintaining and doing the work, you know, from thirties, forties, fifties and onwards, you can really reach that point where you're having an incredible quality of life in your nineties and one hundreds. Um, and we're definitely there now in, in cardiology, we have lots of patients in their hundreds and I expect all my patients to live to their hundreds. So if they're 70, I say you're young. So I, I think that's completely right. And then as it's, it becomes particularly important when people turn 80 or so, we, we always tell patients, you know, it's your 80th birthday this year, you're at a fork in the road. You're either going to go turn left, stop exercising, stop moving, and you're going to get old. Or you're going to turn right and you're going to keep mobile, keep exercising, and you're going to stay young and have a wonderful life, wonderful quality of life for many more years to come. And basically, we have a crystal ball and that's what happens. That's so true. I mean, my mom's, you know, in her late 60s now and she's doing flow lift. She's going to boot camp. She's doing all the things because she doesn't want to get old, right? Like she's like, I don't want to be one of those old people that can't even get up and or touch the, the ground, you know, like, and I just like, I admire her so much for that. And she'll still come to flow lift classes and she might move slower and use less weights, but you know, she's still busting her ass and working hard. And she said she feels so good. Like it's like, and, and, and you know, it's just like us We're you know, in our mid forties, when I don't work out, I'm in a bad mood. I feel terrible. I look terrible. So it's just like, you know, you have to think of exercise as like a maintenance thing, like brushing your teeth or going to the bathroom. You know, it's got to be high on the priority list. Like you have to make it a point to work out at least three times a week if you want to be healthy and you want to be, you know, have a good quality of life. Right. Yes, so. I totally agree. And I love how both of you guys mentioned feeling good physically and mentally, because that's another aspect is the mental health aspect. You know, um, we have so many, we do so many things in life. You guys are both business owners, mothers, wives, especially women where we have, wear so many hats right. and doing something for yourself, um, like exercise that feels so good physically, it has enormous benefits for mental health too. It reduces depression, reduces anxiety. Um, so it really is that magical elixir of life um, in terms of mental and physical health. And what age group? You know, because I'm not sure I would send an 80 year old to flow lift. Would, you know, like what do you think? you know, starting from the earliest age, which whatever, I mean, we actually have some cute like middle school girls coming to flow lift right now. And not that you, that it would max out at a certain age, but like, what's kind of the biggest window of age you see like flow lift being the most beneficial for? That's a good question. And, you know, I feel like everything we've talked about is like, age is kind of just a number. It depends how physically fit you are. There are lots of people in their 80s who run marathons and are amazing and who could rock it and flow lift. I think if there's any question, someone could see a cardiologist. We do lots of you know, like there's an area of sports cardiology. If there's any question, we could do an assessment put someone on a treadmill, put someone on a bike, see how they do, see how their heart does and do an assessment that way. And so I almost don't want to limit it because I think anyone can do it. And, you know, we've been talking about aging and being healthy into aging. So my goal is that someone who could, could do it in their eighties or nineties, I think it's a really safe, you know, like we said, you come, you do a lot of it on all fours which is a really safe position to be in, in terms of the spine um, and protecting your muscle groups, protecting the knees. Um, so, so I think I don't want to limit it, but if there's a question, always can see a cardiologist and do an assessment and make sure that it's safe. That's true. It's such a personal thing based on like 
you know, what's been their history? Have they worked out their whole life? Or is this someone that's, you know, in their 80s, just about to get started, right? Like, look at Dharma Mitra, my teacher in New York, who's now, I think, in his 80s, and the guy can still stand on his head with no hands. But that's yeah. because he's been doing yoga since he was 20. And yeah. he never, ever stopped. And he looks literally 50 years old. And he's like yeah. 80. So, yeah. yeah. I mean, I want everyone, I want it to, like, be a workout that everyone's comfortable with. And it's just nice to hear from you that you don't see any real like safety issues with it. And I do think like at first the moves because of like, you know, sometimes you have to pick your body up off the ground and maybe like move your limbs under and around and all these like unfamiliar ways. But even if you can't do that move, you know, you can try to do the move. And again, it's like usually executed from an all force position. So it is safe and it's reps. So you can go at your own pace. And we have level one classes on the website. So we just want to cast as wide of a net as possible. Because I think the other thing with exercise and why people don't do it is because they haven't found something they liked. And one of the benefits of flow lift is I think it's really fun. It is. I also think, you know, and this is such a like, like just random statement, but I feel like people don't want to work hard. Yeah. They want the magic pill. They want to go to the gym and pretend they're lifting for an hour, but really they're just chatting with their friends or like doing the bare minimum. And so this is a class that really asks you to give it your all and to work hard. And so sometimes people see the moves and they're like, oh, that looks too hard. I'm too scared. I don't want to do it. But, you know, if they only knew how good it feels, if you stick with it, because I know the first couple of times, a lot of people are like, oh, I feel like I'm just like rolling around and I don't know what I'm doing and I look stupid. And, you know, it's like, okay, first of all, nobody's looking at you. Second of all, you know, it is a different way to move and your, your whole body's working together at the same time in every single move. But once you do kind of get the flow of it, like it's, it's a crazy high. It's almost like that runner's high, right? Like when, I, when I'm doing it and you're just in the groove and, and everything's just kind of flowing perfectly, it feels so good. And you do work so hard, but when you're done, the, you know, the, the feeling of accomplishment is huge, right? So I just, I wish that people weren't so lazy, <laughs> you know, cause I really see that a lot. People are lazy. The bottom line is that we've actually evolved to be lazy. Like that's the, why it's so hard is because our species evolved to conserve energy so that you could spend, you could spend your energy running away from a Jaguar. Um, so we've basically evolved to be couch potatoes and to eat really fatty foods. Um, so that's why it's so hard. It is so hard. It, and that's normal. But like you said, Carolina, it takes discomfort. It really takes discomfort to grow. And, and you're going to have to be put under some stress in order to grow, in order to build your muscles, in order to build your cardiorespiratory fitness and get that 50% reduction in mortality. Anything worthwhile in life, worth having, worth achieving, it takes a lot of work. And so I think you just have to, like you said, prioritize that. And something you said, Amanda, is find something that's fun. Find something that's a, that's sustainable for you. And that's another reason why I like Flow Lift is because there's a community. The studio is so pleasant. There's no mirror. You're looking at some beautiful succulents outside and getting that nice sunshine coming in versus everyone looking at themselves in the mirror, kind of like doing their thing. I, I, I hated that. But you're right, Carolina, no one is looking at you. And you can just be on your mat, on your journey, and work it out and get in that flow state and listen to the music and have fun with it. Um, and I have to say, for me, it's being a part of that really carried me through a lot of tough times in medical school and medical training. Um, it actually was a huge part of that for me. Um, so there, so there's so much positive that you get back for the work you put in. Right. I guess the other thing too with with flow lift is that it's always changing and it's never the same. Totally. And I guess that's for me 
like I would try so many other different forms of exercise and it was just the same again and again, even with personal training, it's, you know, same moves, like, you know, you're just doing it like in a rotation, but it's just like you, you start to realize, okay, this is just like a little cycle and it gets boring. And so like, this is the one class that I'm still excited to go teach. I'm still excited to go take because you never know what you're going to get. Like the format's the same, but the moves are different every time. And so I think that keeps your brain like wanting more, you know? Yeah, totally. It almost like you're surprised by each move. So you're distracted a little bit from how much effort and how much, how painful it is to do those steps. Um, so that you're kind of tricking your brain in a way, which I think is, you know, it's like when you go for a run, you want to go in like an interesting place and then all of a sudden you're done. It, it basically, you take us through a really interesting sequence and keep everyone on their toes and uh-huh. it distracts you and yeah. then you're done. Yeah. And it does give you that like mind body connection. You have to be so conscious of what you're doing. So you can't really think about anything else. There's no yeah. room. So in that way, I always feel like in a funny way, it is like a moving meditation <laughs> because you have to be present. You know, there's not much else you can be focused on. There's no spacing out. Yeah. Totally. It's like you're doing that move. hundred yeah. percent. I felt that same exact way, Amanda. It's like I would finish and be like, I was just totally somewhere else. <laughs> mm-hmm. Completely in your body. Yeah. Um, one sort of unrelated question question, and I know this might not be your area of expertise, but I think like bone density is such a huge thing for women as they age. Do you think flow lift as far as like, you know, you're certainly using your own body for resistance, your own body weight, and you have the added ankle weights and, um, dumbbells. I just have been seeing a lot of like encouraging older women to do more heavy lifting, Do you think flow lift also checks that like bone density box? Yes. Yeah, definitely. I think body weight training and light weights, that's really what I tell people to do for bone density um, is just get that resistance training in, whether it be lightweight or your own body weight. I I don't think it definitely doesn't need to be heavy weights to get that benefit. It's just a little bit of weight and resistance work. Yeah, because that seems to be one of the major pieces of feeling good into your old age is like the bone density and, and, and like the, like you said, the balance, cause you don't want to fall yeah. because, yeah, because your bones are going to be a little less dense no matter what, probably. Right. Yeah. It definitely bone density decreases. You age the best, you know, you could do calcium supplementation and weight work, work with weights to prevent that. And some of it's genetic. But why do we care about bone density? It's because you don't want someone at age 85 to fall and break a hip because it, it, you can die from that, you know? So um, it's all about, like you said, if, if you put it all together and you're very fit, you work on your balance, you do your resistance training, there's a much less likelihood you're going to fall and have a problem, even if you have a slightly reduced bone density. And, you know, interesting that you guys mentioned falling because range of motion is so huge when people fall, like people who are tight and don't have a lot of range of motion. Those are the type of people that are going to pull a muscle or a ligament or something like that. But if you have the space and the range of motion and you fall in an awkward position and you're flexible, then most of the time you'll prevent injury, which I think is huge as we get older. Yeah. Yeah. And you are, the way you move in flow lift is everything's kicking in together to sort of work in almost like a symphony. Like it's so, what's the word? I guess it's like this integration of your limbs, your core, your glutes, like everything's working together. So I actually think like if you were to fall, you know, you're almost going to fall in a better way. You know, like someone's really occupying their body in this way, you can even, you can see it in their gait. You can see it, how they walk. Like that person knows how to move. And I think flow lift really contributes to that, like how you occupy your own body and how you feel in your own body. Yeah. Cause it's working those little stabilizer muscles that pretty much no other workout gets you. 
you may get your major muscle groups, but oftentimes people who come to flow, let's say, oh my gosh, I was working some tiny muscle that I've like never touched in my life and I couldn't believe it. So that, that is huge um, in terms of having that stability. Love yeah. It. So, I mean, I guess our mission of creating like this comprehensive workout, <laughs> um, it's just nice to hear your sort of expert backup of how it really does check all the boxes. And it's also nice to hear you say like, you know, as you get older, it's actually like work harder, like don't back away from from a challenge, you know, like, and it, it's sort of like that no pain, no gain thing went out. It seemed like you weren't allowed to say that anymore. But the more I listen to doctors, especially when it comes to longevity, it sounds like it's back. <laughs> yes. Yeah. yeah, definitely. And you guys did. It's just funny because you wanted that workout where you were getting that weight work and resistance training plus the yoga aspect, but you also got aerobic physical activity, which I don't know if you knew you would get an equivalent of going for a run from this workout. And I really think you you do. And I know people have counted their, you know, looked at, done fitness tracking during it. And it's a big workout. Yeah. And so it's really good for the heart. It is protective against falling. It's protective against developing coronary artery disease. It's protective if you do develop it, you're probably going to be less sick from it. So it's it's huge. Yeah, and I can you think we figured out it was cardio when uh, Amanda <laughs> teaches class and she turns purple. But I mean, I'm, I'm huffing and puffing in every class. Like literally, I'm like, okay, I feel like I'm running. Like I cannot breathe deeply through my nose. You know, my heart's pumping. I'm sweating. I'm red. Like it's mm -hmm. cardio, right? Mm -hmm. it's, oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and we really didn't set out to do that, actually. And I just remember, like, as we really developed the format, I'm like, this is really hard. And I am purple. If I turn purple, then we're, we've done cardio. It's, it's a, I also it's, turned a okay. nice shade of yeah. purple red. I remain that way for, for hours. <laughs> Me too. I've always been like that. Well, yeah. You know, one thing I, I wanted to ask you, too, was we had talked about this before, you and I, Amanda, how, like, you know, when we do flow lift, we feel like we're like burning calories and our metabolism is like going and going even after the fact, like for hours. Remember, like we used to talk about that, Jim? Yeah. It feels like my furnace gets turned on. Yeah. yeah. No, that's definitely true because, you know, we can measure the resting metabolic rate and that's based off of, you know, what, it, what is your body composition? What are your mu and your muscle? Basically, your muscles are turned on. They're working. They're creating energy, and that's going on throughout the day. So I think that's absolutely true. And if we measured your metabolic rate throughout the day, it would probably be revved up. Uh, which is why it almost like like we were saying, it makes you feel better in every way. Like when you eat later in the day, it's almost like a different experience. Like you're like, oh, I'm having this beautiful experience of fueling my body, and you can like feel your muscles eating it. I don't know if it's just in my head, but it just it makes everything else feel better. Like you know, eating, going for a walk, you just feel so you know, like it's just a really healthy healthy day. And I mean, that even the waiting to eat thing, it's almost the same as a hard workout, like making your body experience a, a little bit of hunger and not just like feeding that hunger thing right away. It makes it like, cause your body does have to work a little bit to get through that. And when you do wait till like, whatever it is, 11, 12, one to eat, it feels so much better. And you kind of tend to eat lighter. Once you sort of get into that rhythm, it's like yeah. controlled adversity. Mm -hmm. No, because when your body is going through adversity, you turn on those longevity genes right. because your body's evolved to when, when you were running from a bear, you know, when we were evolving, your body was like, oh, okay, we might not get food for a while. We, we got to turn on all the genes that are going to promote us to live. And so that's why things like fasting, um, exercising, tell your body to do those things. Okay. And then one other thing I was thinking of was, 
you know, for me in terms of like working the hardest in flow lift is when I'm teaching, right? Like I will never work harder than when I'm teaching because you can't take breaks. Everyone's watching you. You got to lead the class, right? So even when I go take Amanda's class, I'll like take a water break, shoot a couple videos, hang out in child's pose. Like I will never, ever work as hard as when I'm teaching. So I guess I just wanted to ask you, like, what made you want to be a teacher? And, you know, how did you get into it? Like who introduced you to the class? All that. Yeah, I I think I heard about the, t- the class from Laura, who was my hairstylist um, and an instructor. And I thought, oh, perfect. She loves short hair and she loves working out. And uh, that's really cool. Me too. (laughs) And so I got into it through her. And then I just wanted a way to give back, like kind of practice what I preach. And I've always felt like being a teacher when I teach a class, it's like I'm, I'm there doing the workout with the community. And it's just a small way that I'm able to promote this lifestyle that I'm speaking about when I'm in clinic with a patient, that's just different. And it's really meaningful to me to be doing the workout with you, sweating it out, having fun. And we're a team. And I really, you know, I get a chance to at the end of the class, say, you know, put your hands over your heart, feel that positive energy and wellness that you just created. It's the most powerful medicine we have in the world. And I truly believe that. And it's just a really meaningful way of, of promoting this lifestyle within the community for me. So it's been really, a really big part of my life over the last decade or so. Cool. I love that. Yeah, that's amazing. Thank you so much. We're so glad you found Flow Lift. It's really a blessing having not only a physician, but a physician so interested in like how exercise can, you know, really, really benefit your health, especially with, you know, cardiology and the cardiovascular system, because that does seem to be the one of the biggest problems for people, especially in our country. So And it it makes us feel really good about what we're doing. Like it really is helping, you know, not only us, but everyone doing it. And we certainly love our community, our students, our teachers, like really makes it so fun. Anything else you want to ask, Carolina? No, I think I got it all. And if someone wants to come see you, Elizabeth, how do they do that? So you're a cardiology fellow. Does that mean you're still in the process of becoming an integrative cardiologist? Yes. So I'm in year two of three of integrative cardiology training, where I'll have board certification in cardiology and integrative medicine at the end of that. Um, But you can still come see me at Scripps. I'm at the Shiley Center for Integrative Medicine, which is right over by uh, the Torrey Pines Golf Course there. There is an ocean view. There is a track to walk before and after your appointment. There's a meditate a stone labyrinth for meditation to walk there is a gym so you would be like a general doctor like in the, if you like could, could i go to you like once a year for like blood work and all that type of stuff yeah i actually think anyone pretty much at any age um that's an adult should could have a visit for a cardiac risk assessment and prevention even if you're totally healthy, because that's the, the problem with coronary disease. It's, it's silent until something really big hits you one day. And half of men and women have heart attacks. And that's just the reality. Yep. Men, it's a little earlier, like in the 50s and 60s. And women, it's a little later, like in the 70s. But um, and often every time people say, oh, gosh, I didn't feel anything. I thought I was healthy. And so that's why I'm so excited about risk assessment, where we basically look inside, we look at your labs, we might do some imaging, and we put you on that spectrum from totally bulletproof to, you know what, you have some hidden risks that we should address now while we're ahead of the curve and can prevent suffering later on. So I think it's really beneficial for anyone but especially if you have a family history, someone in the family who've had a heart attack or stroke, um, symptoms or anything like that. But I think it's beneficial for anyone. 
and you guys are recommending exercise and a diet and all that. So it ends up sort of being like in a really truly integrative experience, which is what 100% all, like, it's about for. everyone's, you know, the whole lifestyle from what you eat and drink every day, um, how much you're exercising. And we can, you know, we have some really cool modalities at the integrative center too. Like we have acupuncturists, we have biofeedback, we have healing touch, um, integrative women's health doctors who deal with hormones, um, integrative pain management. So it's really a holistic experience, which is what I love. That's amazing. Yeah, that's great. Well, thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me. And thank you for really involving me in what you guys have created over the years. I'm really grateful. I know I've said that to you guys a lot. Um, and I really feel you sh you guys should feel you're doing a, a big service to the community and to the world by promoting health in this way and making it fun and sustainable. So it's more than a job, more than a business. It's really a mission you guys are on and it's, it's very positive for the world. So. Thank you. Thank you. And it really means a lot coming from a doctor. It really does. So thank you for your time and being a part of our awesome community. Yeah. Thanks, Elizabeth. We'll get you back on the schedule soon. Yeah. <laughs> thank you Yay, All right. thank you. yeah so that was elizabeth and it was really great talking with her especially hearing about how great flow lift is from a physician uh, there's a lot of things that i kind of suspected with um how our workout uh affects you on many levels but it was nice to hear that confirmation from a physician and um so yeah i mean what did you think it was great right yeah, I loved it. Um, I think she just is such a great doctor. And it's really like the future of medicine is finally here that, you know, we're really looking at not just a pill you can take, but the things you can do not only to prevent, but to reverse um, heart disease. It's pretty amazing. Yeah. And if you want to try Flow Lift, there's a lot of options. If you live in San Diego, you can come to Booty Yoga in La Jolla. We have multiple classes, at least at least one a day. Um, oftentimes we have two. Um, we also have a studio that loves Flow Lift and that has a ton of classes in Monterey, Mexico. They also have trainings there. There's tons of teachers. So that's sort of another big like ground zero for Flow Lift. And of course, online at flowliftfitness.com, we have hundreds of flow lift classes, both beginner and our sort of regular um, level class. That's it's hard, but like we said in the podcast, don't be scared of a hard workout. That's actually really the direction that we need to be going to live to 150. Yeah, um, exactly. if that's what you want, or to feel good well into your 90s and possibly early hundreds. Yeah. And we do live stream the classes now, the flow lift classes, where we didn't do that before. So if you like more of that, like, you know, I have to be there at a certain time to make your, you know, make yourself do it. That's also an option. So we live stream all the morning classes. So one, one, every, I think it's one a day, right? The morning class. Yeah. Monday through Saturday. Monday through Saturday. Um, and then stay tuned for our next podcast. We're going to be talking about the importance of making time to work out, do yoga, meditate, you know, at least once a day, especially for moms. So hopefully we'll have some moms on the podcast and a psychologist talking about the importance of exercise with regards to mental health and being able to feel good on top of looking good. So I'm looking, really looking forward to that one because I think there's a lot of moms who put themselves last, right? They've got the to-do list, the cooking, the cleaning, the being mom, being wife, and then everything else just kind of falls to the, to the sideline and they don't really make time for what's important, making themselves feel good and look good. And then that in turn makes you a better mom. So stay tuned for that. That's our next one. And thanks thank for you listening. So much for listening. 